Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This week in Liverpool, Natalie and Paul. And there's no denying who's the boss. Paul can't do anything. Well, he can, I just don't let him. What are you doing? Putting this off? No. Don't put it off, because I don't want it off. Paul, it's not a debate. Yeah. But now it's time for Paul to take control. I want him to be the man and prove that he can do this for us. While she dreams of a Moroccan mirage... Isn't it amazing? Isn't that it? is what I want. Just a shame I can't live in Morocco and have it. <laughs> All he can see is sci-fi and stars. I want a space theme in my bedroom. Right. Will Paul's mischievous streak land him in trouble? Here's Johnny. The moon room? No. I ain't got the words. <laughs> <laughs> she will. Battery. She's not gonna like it. I won't kill him, but his balls will make good earrings. Will he change tack when he sees what she's created? It's like walking into Aladdin's cave, this. God, I'm shaking. And how will controlling Natalie cope when she finally goes back to her completely transformed home? I hate it. Waking up to that every morning is a nightmare. When Natalie met Paul, it was love at first sight. You was like potty in my hands, wasn't you? You melted. The minute you see me, you was buckling at the knees. Oh, my God. Together. This will be the first time since they met a year and a half ago that Postman Paul's had control over anything. Mm, except his games console. I decide where we go on holiday, where we go for dinner, what we eat. I choose his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with you with that on. Go and get changed. No chance. No, 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 no. Natalie's controlling nature developed as soon as she laid eyes on him. He kept phoning me up every night. Oh, Paul, come round. No, come round. no. Oh, Three o'clock in the morning. Paul, I'll get the notes of our songs. text messages. A text you sent me. Oh, you are the light of my life. You shine as yeah. bright as the stars. Yeah, I milked you with poetry, but I didn't. You milked think, me. I, I didn't expect the backlash of three o'clock phone calls. I was drunk and I needed a lift home. <laughs> True to form, it was Natalie who put an offer down on the house after just 14 months. I took control because Paul's so laid back, he's horizontal. There's never an urgency with Paul, ever. So when he went away for the weekend, I put an offer on the house and it got accepted, so I proceeded to buy. Their home is perfectly positioned, close to both of their families and in the heart of their community. But for Hempeck Paul, it was what was next door that appealed the most. Hey, hey, everybody drink on me. Everybody have a drink, have a drink, have a drink on me. Natalie dreams about a future. She wants the perfect wedding and she wants the perfect kids and she's, she's got all that vision of everything, whereas I've no vision of anything like that, really. In a bid to test out her future with Paul, Natalie's decided to see if he's man enough for the job. This is about Paul taking ownership of the house. You know, I'm such a control freak and I'm very independent and I want him to be the man and prove that he can do this for us. Baby. Ladies, let's go. For 29-year-old Natalie, appearance is everything. She even designs shop displays for a living. So when it comes to her home, she's very particular. It's just a cream magnolia box, so I want a lot of colour, a lot of vibrance. Cooking is a major part of my life. I want my wall knocking through, so I want it all completely open so that when I've got family and friends here, when I'm cooking, I can cook and speak to them at the same time instead of running in and out and there being a barrier to people. This is my area. So if he doesn't get it right, the PlayStation will be smashed. 
So, a small warning hanging in the balance as Natalie prepares to leave. Grab that body in here, love. <laughs> and the fate of the house is in Paul's hands. What's the case going for? Do I trust him as a person? Yes. Do I trust him with my house? No. I will. <laughs> Be back soon. When she returns in three weeks, she'll be walking into a whole new home that Paul's made over. It's up to me now. Just... Yeah, but just think these three weeks could change the rest of your life. <laughs> Love you. Because I know she's upset, it's a bit weird that obviously they can't be there and comfort her or anything like that. Well, I'm sure we'll be strong and uh, come through. Natalie will be staying at her mum's place seven miles away. I think my fear is not coping. She's really missing him. It's only been, <laughs> God, I know how long it's been. Day one of the challenge, and Paul is raring to go with his plans for the house. Luckily, his mate Dave arrives to lock down his design ideas and help spend the cash. There you go. There. Paul decides to reveal his master plan. I'm thinking, I want a space theme in my bedroom. Right. <laughs> bedroom. Yeah, when I go to bed at night, I want to be looking at this there. <laughs> Before meeting Natalie, Paul travelled around Australia, skydiving in the day and at night sleeping beneath the stars. He wants to recreate this in his house in Nosley. She's gonna kill you. This is the first, this is the first one. The, the bedroom as well. <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> she's gonna give you Orion's belt. <laughs> That's what she's gonna do. Paul has three weeks until Natalie returns to their house and he's determined to put his stamp on their master bedroom. A space theme it is. When I lie, lie down, I'll be looking at the uh, looking into the stars. He wants to turn his bedroom ceiling into a night sky, complete with constellation lighting. I don't think she'll like it. Right. I'm, I'm not going down with a ship either. But the Boise theme isn't going to stop there. Paul's also got designs on this spare room. So this game's room. In London, Natalie's got a design project of her own. She's been given a life-size blank canvas of her kitchen and dining room to put her own stamp on. And a week before she returns home, Paul will get to see it, so it's crucial she gets it right. Her cousin Beth has come to hear her grand plans. It's very clean. What are you trying to say about my house? <laughs> I would not feel comfortable living in a house this white. Yeah, but this is exactly like my house now, isn't it? There's no not colour, there's that, no depth, uh... there's, there's nothing. Let's have a look at the kitchen. Natalie wants an archway to open up her kitchen and dining room, but the kitchen's not Paul's domain. I don't think he'd do an archway because to him, he always says that the kitchen should be closed off. Who doesn't entertain? He can't cook. He can't even make an egg. He can just about make pizza and that's because it's got instructions on the back of it. <laughs> I try to think. <laughs> when does the three weeks start? Today. Oh dear. He may look clueless, but Paul does have plans to knock down the dividing kitchen and dining room wall. But the reality isn't quite so simple. Is this not a supporting wall? I'm not too sure. There's only one way to find out. If it's brick behind here, it's going to be hard work. If it's not, I think we're cooking on gas. Houston. We have a problem. <laughs> We've got to support them all here. The plasterboard masks a structural wall, which supports the upper floor of the house. This is not a simple spot of DIY, so Paul will need to find an expert. 
Meanwhile, Natalie's been given one. Experienced interior designer Alex Reeves. I've got some wallpaper samples here, fabrics, tiles, carpets. All of that collection I love and I really do like this one. As Natalie and her designer get down to business with colour schemes, the lads have hit a brick wall. Feels like I can get nowhere now because I can't take that wall down. Away from the studio, and Natalie brings Beth along to somewhere she wants to use as inspiration for her set. Beth, this place is amazing. You know what I'm saying? from the outside. Isn't it amazing? Yummy. See this arch here? This is what, you know, from, from the dining room straight into the kitchen, into the that kitchen. is what I want. The archway, even down to the metal on the side, I want down the side of the walls. Ever since I came here, I always thought, God, if I have a house, it's got to be like this. Mm. Just a shame I can't live in Morocco and have it. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking now? Now you've seen it again. I don't think he understands the concept of Morocco. He, won't, he will not visualise I this. don't think Paul even knows where Morocco is. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. At home in Liverpool, the lads are also looking for inspiration. But Paul's not even on the same planet as his girlfriend. Yeah, Dave, you can have this in my home. You need to my bedroom. I'll absolutely boss this. <laughs> this is what I want. Welcome to the outer limits here. Yeah. I think you've uh, reached your limits. I don't think this is a good idea. There's a star waiting in the gift shop. Paul finds the perfect contraption to create his cosmic night sky. $7.99. And puts a £7.99 dent in his 10 grand budget. Thank you very much. You're as kind as you are, beautiful. <laughs> create your own starry sky in your bedroom. Invite your family and friends. They will be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> so, 10 grand and three weeks to do up the house. And while girlfriend Natalie's hoping for a Moroccan casbah, Posty Paul's dreaming of a planetarium. They say opposites attract. With her theme for the dining room nailed, Natalie's now decided to give the kitchen a traditional English farmhouse look. So is this your dream oven? Well, that one, maybe that one, maybe that one, yeah. maybe that one, I don't know. <laughs> All of them. Do you know what, if you said to me, do you want an Argo and you can go home and keep it, or do you want Paul back? I'll choose the Argo. <laughs> Natalie's in her element and has a clear idea about what she wants. I think the Argo, even the worktops, I like them. I just, oh, honestly, I love them. Poor Paul, he's really got his work cut out. <laughs> He'll have something else cut off if he doesn't get me an Argo. <laughs> Whew, that's a bit harsh, or maybe not. Inspired by the planetarium, Paul wants to make a head start on his space-themed bedroom. First up is his constellation ceiling. He's called him back up in the form of fellow postie, Mike. Hey, come on, son. It's the uh, mess so far. I'm dreading the thought that, oh, my God, if he's gone near my bedroom. My toiletries are arranged in a certain way. I know exactly where everything is. I even have my drawers done a certain way. My top drawers, my underwear, just the thought of him putting the drawers back and putting my underwear in the bottom drawer will get, <laughs> will get me. With Natalie's clutter safe from harm, the lads can crack on with the ceiling's night sky effect. Firstly, they put up sheets of MDF. Easier said than done. Put it down. What's your problem holding this? It's heavy. Stop laughing. Don't laugh. Paul. <laughs> With the boards attached, the next stage is to mark out star constellations using Paul's £7.99 toy projector kit. The whole ceiling's riding on this piece of cardboard. How much does that put in there? 120. 120? Let's give it a crack. With the stars plotted, the boards are prepared for the next stage. 120 fibre optic lights. But only one person actually seems to be thinking about Natalie. It'll work. 
It'll definitely work. I just don't think Natalie will be impressed if, it, if it's a miracle or not. But there's no going back now. The bedroom's well underway. Five days in, and the boys can finally turn their attention to gutting the kitchen. Paul splashed out a hundred quid on a skip. All that could come off, them tiles. Although he's a DIY novice, even Dave's able to muck in. Which comes off quite easy. But conscious that they need a replacement kitchen, Paul's arranged for a man to measure up. To ensure the units match his dining room table, they're using the leg as a colour guide. It's a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the oven and hall bed central, even size units either side, fridge on that side. We'll probably put your set of drawers over this side. It was about 4,600. A four and a half grand deal done. Back to the destruction. After a week apart from Paul, Natalie visits Beth's dad, her uncle Mark, who's also in the process of renovating his kitchen. Can you not go and run around my house and tell Paul what to do? No, no, no. <laughs> He's going to try and impress you, isn't he? At least with one of the rooms. I would imagine he'll, he'll do a good job of the kitchen, because that's where he'll expect you to spend most of your time <laughs> while he's in the... <laughs> Across town, and Paul is working on the kitchen. He's managed to get a build around to look at his supporting wall as he needs to know if he can bash it down. That's your, there's your brick right there now. It's good news. The wall only goes as far up as the first floor, so the job isn't as impossible as he thought. Just holding basically my bedroom floor up. To save time later and cut the job cost down to 200 quid, the lads prepare the area by removing the superficial bits, such as the skirting boards and plasterboard. Temporary scaffolding's erected and adjusted to the ceiling height, transferring the weight of the ceiling away from the wall. With the bricks exposed, it's time to take down the wall. Here's Johnny. Finally, a wooden joist is fed through to take the ceiling weight and the scaffolding can be removed. Down here, I think she'll be OK with. Walk upstairs with the, uh, the space theme idea. I think she's going to go mad. Blissfully unaware, Natalie and designer Alex are continuing their search for her fantasy dining room. How's this for Moroccan? Ooh, it's, this is like Aladdin's cave, isn't it? This is exactly <laughs> what I want in my house. This one shop has just put everything into perspective, just this one place has put everything in that I want. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. Having finally demolished his supporting wall and with almost half his budget gone on the kitchen, Paul's going to spend the next few days focusing on the starry ceiling bedroom that Natalie's bound to love. But he's not stopping at stars on the ceiling. He splashed out 50 quid for a mural of the earth. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> if you did it on your own, then yeah, yeah, you're into that sci-fi whiz and all that stuff. But it's not that sci-fi whiz. Would you ever go camping? Also... What? If you, ever, if, you, if you went camping, would you ever look at the sky if it looked awesome? Where are you going with that? Would you? Would, would you sleep outside? Sky? Would you? I'd sleep in a tent. I've slept on a desert island, me, and that's all that was there, and it was brilliant. But couldn't you just go outside and sleep on your, in your garden there and look up and think, hey, it's nice, that? <laughs> Would you sleep outside there? <laughs> you will be sleeping outside there soon. <laughs> <laughs> with the studio set coming together, Natalie dreams about what she'd do with the rest of the house given the chance. She takes Mum Christine out shopping to look at bedrooms. Maybe looking at these subtle pastels. I like those colours. I like that green. That's quite nice. Oh, that's so nice. Good. This to me isn't chilled. I want whites and neutrals and space. I want a bedroom where it's just it's our time. So as much space as possible. Be careful what you wish for, Natalie. 
Even Paul's dad, Phil, can't bring him back down to earth. <laughs> Natalie's going to be really in love with this room, isn't she? Of course she is. <laughs> I think you've been on that moon dust. <laughs> as long as I like it, that's the main thing. No, it's two of you in the relationship. But even the stars and the earth aren't enough for Paul. He's now decided to put the moon on the floor. So he's contacted Mark the carpet man to come and measure up. I wanted like a grey carpet here, but if I could, uh, I was going to go with like the circle theme, just just like an arc there, and then the rest be black. Okay. So the earth's going to be here, and the moon is coming up along the bottom like that. That's a bit more lunar like, isn't it? I suppose. <laughs> My girlfriend doesn't know I'm doing this, but like I'm putting a star theme on the ceiling. Like, would you would you have it in your room? <laughs> My wife wouldn't let me off down there. Anyway. If she spent three weeks away, would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Should we get measuring? That'll be a no then. <laughs> Oblivious to the fact that she's going to be walking on the moon, Natalie's still on her Moroccan mission. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, oh, look, they've got antlers. Oh my god. <gasps> Little oh, baby. <laughs> You're stroking it as if it's still I know, alive. I know, how freaky am I? <gasps> Adam the antler, I'm going to name him. You need to clean him, bless him. They're not looking after you here, Adam, are they? Come home with me. Oh, baby. I want him. I love him. He's mine. Bye, Adam. <laughs> In Liverpool, Mark the Carpet Man's taken on the role of Paul's interior designer. I found these, and I personally think that they may work a little bit better. So you went home and actually thought about my design, I thinking how good it was. It's gonna look horrendous. It's midway through the challenge, and Paul's bedroom is well underway. But apart from the wall coming down, the kitchen diner remains a mess. With the new kitchen arriving tomorrow, they need to plaster the walls and level out the floor. So it's a group effort. Tell you what, Dean, you're a lifesaver, mate. Hey, good luck with the messages with the room, lad. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Day 11, and there's a delivery. Paul's four and a half grand kitchen has arrived, but to cut costs, they're going to fit it themselves. Are they having a laugh? Is this for another kitchen as well? Are we, are we putting two up? Uh -huh. Mike has grave what doubts. You doing, what you don't. You're saying uh -huh. it's going to fly into place. You're getting worse than Dave. But you need three keeping down to. Level Earth type of thing. He might need kicking down to Level Earth, but with the arrival of the £370 carpet, he's still very much on the moon. Welcome to the Lunar Experience. <laughs> But you not wouldn't have thought of this, never in a million years. Can you see it? <laughs> I can see it, all right. See, I think it looks brilliant. See, you've got the moon on the floor, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole idea. I ain't got the words. <laughs> <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> well, that, that's what we want. Excited by his carpet, Paul shows it off to Mike and his girlfriend, Michelle. What's with the two-tone? Because that's the moon curling round from your wallpaper. Mm, I just wouldn't have done this look whatsoever, so... Well, what would you have done? A nice girly room. Yeah, well, that'd be me walking into hell. Well, we'll just do the downstairs for her, and you have the upstairs. Oh, well, that's the crack with kitchen. Give her the kitchen. Stick a chain on her feet inside to the sink. <gasps> <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Back at her Uncle Mark's, and Natalie's fretting about what the boys are up to. Can you teach Paul to cook? No. I could teach him to decorate. Please. <laughs> He's probably going to make a right mess now, isn't he? I'm worried about a bedroom. 
because I was looking at bedroom stuff and now I'm thinking, oh my God, please do not touch my bedroom. You'll be living in the garden. No, you don't mean that. Try me. You've had a week and a half without him. I just want to hear his voice. I just want to see him. Yeah. I do. You're missing Paul. And your bedroom. Missing my bedroom. And if he changes your bedroom, you'll kill him. We know. I think if he touches the bedroom, that, that I will be kicking off. More so than any other room in the house. <laughs> in his own little world, faffing around with his starry ceiling. This is the fourth time we've done this. No, they won't be coming down now. And there's just over a week until Natalie comes home. Things could be better. A lot better. Hell of a lot better. Kitchen's nowhere near started, really. This ceiling's taking forever. I think Natalie will be coming back to an unfinished project and a building site. Following Natalie's blueprint of an open plan kitchen diner, the design team's work is well underway. to ensure that Paul will be in no doubt as to what she's after, she arrives to oversee the work in progress. Hi. <laughs> Look what we have here. That is going to make a real statement, isn't it? As long as Paul can <laughs> say, I want one, I want him. OK, so you're happy with your archway? I love my archway. At the moment, it's looking slightly unfinished, so obviously we'll have your gold leaf on the inside to give it that Moroccan feel. I love it. I think it's so fantastic. I just want to take all of this home. <laughs> if you can see that this is my dream and this is what I want, I do hope that somewhere in the back of his mind he might think, do you know what, I'm going to treat her, I'm going to get her something that has got her stamp on it. Natalie's Moroccan theme is starting to come together. <laughs> 27-year-old Posty Paul has been given 10 grand to do up his house in three weeks. For the past 12 days, he's been on a quest to recreate a trip to Australia, where he slept beneath the stars. Cheers, thanks for having me. Today, as part of his plan, he receives a special delivery. A £233 fibre-optic kit for his star ceiling. This is a real labour of love. I have 120 mapped out stars which will form the constellations and then I have to feed an additional 90 on top of that just for random stars. Pretty mad and it's, a, it's not a simple task. But fortunately Paul did train as an electrician even if he didn't quite qualify. And part of the beauty of this is you'd think of it. Mm, exactly. Seventy of these I've thread so far. It's a long process. I mean, don't know about Nat killing me for not liking it, but I'd certainly kill her if she didn't like it after spending all this time on it. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Two weeks down, and after what seems an eternity, Paul might just be ready to raise his four hundred pound roof. His plan is to feed the lights up into the loft and power them from there. Why don't you? He ropes in friends and family to muck in and attach the star ceiling. Right now, grab it if you can. There's a crowd amassing here. Loads of people want to come back. It's pretty hard to believe that I've done it. I mean, look at that. It's a. Uh... It's a crazy bit of work that's been done there. Time to launch his lunar lighting, as he's now got an audience for the unveiling. Do you want to turn the lecky off? Three, two, one. <laughs> Let it shine. Happy with that, boys. And the 
beauty of fiber optics is that you can paint straight over them. Although the rest of the house is in chaos, the bedroom's starting to take shape. If I put the mural up or do that... Paul's dad, Phil, arrives to put up his earth mural. If a woman doesn't like something, she doesn't like it. And no matter how good you make it or how much effort you put into it, I wouldn't have the courage to do it. But <laughs> she's going to have to live with it. After over two weeks of hard graft, Paul and the lads decide to take a break and head to Natalie's uncle's to watch the footy. Not really, lad. Leaving Natalie uneasy as Paul's on her home turf. So it's not only do I miss him, but he's... he's somewhere where I want to be, and that's worse, because he's, he's in my haven right now, and that's worse. I just really miss him. <laughs> Come on, Everton! Paul's dad, Phil, just can't resist blurting out what he's been up to to Natalie's uncle, Mark. I've been working like hell so that our daughter-in-law can see her new house come together. You know Natalie better than I do. Yeah, but <laughs> we've done that extent with the moon room. The moon room? No! She will battery. Which one? Which room? The bedroom. No. It's not changed the bedroom. It's not changed the bedroom. The bedroom is no more. The bedroom is the move. Paul! I'm concerned about you. Because if you put it. a moon in her bedroom, she in will. Our bedroom. Our bedroom. It's up to me to decorate and I've done it. And it looks class as well. Would you change anything? No, I wouldn't change anything I've done. Crack on with what I want. She's not going to like it. <laughs> no, but well, she won't. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush here. <laughs> Natalie's a sheep when it comes to fashion or anything like that. She follows the crowd, like, whereas I don't care. I, I've never been one to be bothered about what fashion thinks, so I'll I just crack on with my own. With a week to go, Paul can finally focus on the kitchen. spent 700 quid prepping it, and now it's time for the four and a half grand units to go up. Marking out where the cabinets would go would take hours, but Paul's borrowed a laser level, enabling him to keep everything on the straight and narrow. the kitchen cabinets up, but fitting the worktops is more tricky, and he calls in joiner mate Mike. What's that the other thing when she comes back? She what? don't like it. That's what? It. Will she like it when she comes back? What? Take your air defenders <laughs> off. Paul's only installed the shell of the kitchen, and with just five days to go, he's far from finishing. He's not even started on the dining room. The place is a mess, and the spare room that he wanted to transform into a lad's lair is still untouched. But Natalie's message to her boyfriend couldn't be bolder or clearer. I tried to do handstands for you. I By knocking through to the kitchen and painting the walls in a continuous colour, Natalie has created a spacious, sociable room for entertaining. The antlers have pride of place on the feature wall, framed with Moroccan lighting that casts atmospheric shadows. She's brought her cousin Beth to London to show off her hard work. Wow. Oh, your kettle and your toaster match your aga. <laughs> <laughs> There's Adam. <gasps> He's so pretty. Do you like him? This is, like, the most beautiful dining room. Shall we? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think Paul's going to have a real shot when he sees this. I don't think that I, I don't think he'd expect this from me at all. I think this room is absolutely stunning. I stunning. wish more than anything I could say, right, if Paul's coming in here now, if he could pick up this whole thing and put it in our house and say, yeah, do it. One last hint for Paul to pick up on when he sees her set. Buy her on Mount your head on it. <laughs> Buy or die, baby. Message delivered. It's time to sit back and wait. Paul and Dave are in a world of their own as they take in the one room they're actually getting somewhere with. Just like being back in the auditorium then. <laughs> <laughs> Done well, mate. I, I eat my words. Looks really good. So did you have it in your room? Eh? Would you have it in your room? No. But, uh, but it, it does look good. But there's only so long Paul can stay gazing at the stars. It's time for him to come crashing back down to Earth. <laughs> With just a few days until Natalie returns home, Paul heads to the studio to see what she's done and the message she wants to deliver. It's like walking into Aladdin's cave, this. Isn't it? Not for making pizza, there. This is like one extreme to the other. At least her three kings will be able to find the way to my northern star. <laughs> No, it's not coming out. Buy or die, kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> been heck. He died, didn't he? I reckon she wants you to buy that. For a hundred quid, it. I'd sponsor a live one over in Africa to stay alive and feed it. <laughs> I'm not buying that. Uh, you sure? Dave. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. If two worlds collided, my starlight would end up above this, wouldn't it? If I put yellow paint all the way through, I don't know, I don't think it'd go now. It's nice what she's done, but it's about what I'd do, innit? I wouldn't do this. What about Bambi? No. I think you should buy it and then stick it in the dining room. To be honest, 100 quid. You're making it worse. You make it better and buy it. Just walk that way. The lads leave uninspired, abandoning Natalie's beloved antlers and the dream she's worked so hard to achieve. Natalie's out with Beth and Leone, and the girls are beginning to wonder whether Paul will actually take the hint from her set. It's not like he gets to decide a lot in um, your relationship. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon he's going to dig his heels in and think, right, no, I've got this opportunity, I've got this chance, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it my way. I won't kill him, but his balls will make good earrings. Over two and a half weeks in, and Dave wants to take on at least one of Natalie's ideas. It's Hello. just a question of convincing Paul. Yeah, I was just seeing if red actually goes with that. Yeah, and does it? Wood, eh? And does it? It would have to be like a red like that, though. But Natalie's scared he'll copy her idea and get it totally wrong. My worst thing now was going home to a red and yellow themed place. The question is, which shade? Red and yellow and pink and green Purple and orange and blue I can sing a rainbow That warm yellow there. I'll go for that. Paul will just go red, yellow. Autumn red. Paul doesn't do colours. That's nothing like it. It doesn't matter, I don't care. She likes autumnal colours. He just sees a colour and it's a colour. She likes what? Autumnal co colours. You could have 50 colours of red, but to him it's red. That, it doesn't matter. That, we could be here for hours looking red. for reds. Red and yellow and pink. You don't even know what oxblood red looks like. I googled it. Ruby Starlet. Look at that. That's it. Do you want to phone Dave? He can't see what we're looking at, can he? Crimson Kiss. Dragon's Blood. What do you reckon that's the same? It's going to be close, isn't it? Nigerian sons, Moroccan sons. Because you can't complain about the Moroccan team, can she? As he parts with 60 quid, Paul decides to hold Mike partly accountable. It comes to the crudge. You pick the red, I pick the yellow. 50 50 in this now. <laughs> With 
just three days till Natalie comes home, Paul starts painting the kitchen. I hope this red goes with this kitchen. With the red coming together, it's time for the yellow. But the sickly banana shade is worrying Mike. I don't think either colour is that Moroccan. I think it's more Spanish tapas restaurant looking. To be honest, you're probably right, but for me, it's red and yellow. That's definitely not the yellow that we, we picked out yesterday. No, no look, it's this, not. this yellow, he picked it being cute in, in the spur of the moment. Look, over there. <laughs> you're asking too many questions. Even Paul's picking up the negative vibe. I I'll be happy when this kitchen's done. I thought that I could have had this done in the first bloody week. That was optimistic and a half, wasn't it? Three weeks later, I'm still cracking on with it. It's a lot of yellow in it. <laughs> As the kitchen starts to take shape, Everyone seems to have an opinion about the colour scheme. The yellow is nice, it's just wild red skating boards. Do you not like the red? What colour are you doing them skating boards? I think you've gone overboard with that. I think it looks good like that. You're going to put a white door on it? Yeah, eh? It's all right. We gotta fly, 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 fly. We gotta fly, fly. The lads work into the night as they attempt to copy Natalie's colour scheme. Down. Meanwhile, she's over at Beth's oh, house. Come here, come. So I like this room. I like the colours in this room. Because that's not bright red. Obviously, we know he's been to the studio. I'm worried about if he tries to reconstruct that in the house. Mm. That would really annoy me if he did that. Oh, dear. The comments have started to wear Paul down. Even he's starting to question the colours. I was happy with the walls magnolia, me, but I got persuaded by... Uh, Dave and friends to change it with even red and yellow, which I'm regretting now because oh, the, this painting's taking ages. Certainly time I haven't got. I've got three days left now. Uh, my house is a wreck. This kitchen ain't finished. The bedrooms aren't finished. It's not looking good. <laughs> Paul's now spent over eight grand. He's determined to finish on time, so he ropes in his brother Kevin and his dad. I've never took this much time over my own bloody house. At last, Paul can focus on his two grand games room. I'm going to stick my telly on this wall here, so we'll probably have, like, chairs there. OK, look at these doors. Put your telly in here, cos it'll be inserted then. You've got a shelf for all your games, and that will free up the whole of that room then. With the clock ticking, Paul and his dad crack on. Natalie's got plenty of time on her hands and goes for a little pampering. But he's got, like, the full reign. Everything. And he doesn't have a designer. He doesn't have anybody like that. He does it himself. Natalie, you're not the person I'd want to get on the wrong side. <laughs> That's why I hope it's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> You'll have a games room, you'll have... That's what um, everyone keeps saying, a games room. Like a cinema a room. room. <laughs> and I said, that'd be my worst fear. It's not going to add value to the house. Yeah, they're dead into tellies, lads, aren't they? A gadget... Oh. I'd feel dead sorry for him if I didn't like it. Yeah. So would I. Put your hand in. <laughs> <laughs> I may never see him pass with his postman trolley ever again. No, it'd be a suitcase. <laughs> The games room's finally taking shape, but with only 24 hours to go, the house is a tip. She will want to see this room. Paul calls in some female recruits, his mum and sister, to mop up the mess. It's all hands on deck, putting the finishing touches to Natalie's copycat kitchen diner. Tomorrow, Natalie will finally see what Paul's done to her house. I can't wait to go home, although I don't know what home actually looks like at the minute. If there was just one thing, like my antlers, if he's bought them and put them in there, that would be it, that would be it for me. I'd be, I'd be, I wouldn't care what anything else looked like, as long as I knew he actually gave me some thought. 
good news. Paul's dad's got a skull. Perhaps Nagy won't notice that it's a horse. Horse out, Eddie. Eddie was Phil's mascot when serving in the Falklands, and even he's getting a makeover. I'm amazed just going into my bedroom that I've achieved something like that, so it's been absolutely brilliant. Everybody's been laughing at me saying you're mad, but hopefully this is just going to be a, a new world for her and hopefully she'll love it. In three weeks, Paul has transformed their boring, bland home. The plain, pokey kitchen has been opened up and filled with vibrant colours maximising the space and creating a room ideal for entertaining. The spare room has been recreated into a gadget heaven for the lads. Paul has turned the master bedroom into his own planetarium with fibre optic star lighting. Not knowing what to expect, Natalie heads home. Why is there a skip outside my house? She said, love you, boy, I love you so. She said, love you, baby, oh, oh. What will she make of her new home? God, I'm shaking. There's nothing I don't like. It, that kind of scares me a bit. <laughs> it's probably the only thing I'm not 100% on, but everything else I can honestly say, I owe Paul big time. Who the hell has helped Paul with this? What about the arch? You've not got an arch. No, but I like it. Completely open. I do like it. I think it is amazing because he's got elements of what I like, but it's his, yeah. so it actually says, this is me and Paul now, as opposed to coming in and it just being all Paul's and him coming back and doing it all what I want. So this is... Both of us. This is both of us. This is like... Oh, I'm going to start crying. This is like not and Paul. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of it. Natalie's blown away with the downstairs, but there's still the upstairs to look at. Oh, my God. Oh, you know what? He's sleeping in here on his own. <gasps> no! <laughs> well, I, I suppose he deserves it. One final room to get Natalie's approval. I hate it. Do you not think it's romantic? Mom, this isn't this is a nightmare for me. It's dark, it's black, everything I hate. I don't like that familiar, I hate it. I hate it. I hate everything about it. I hate black, I hate grey, I, I don't like those colours. It's not, that is not a room. He should have done that in his room. Waking up to that every morning is a nightmare. There's nothing about me in that room, nothing. That room is his. That's meant to be our room, somewhere for me and him, and that's not me and him in that room. Nothing is me and him in that room. That's his. 
I'm so angry with him now. I'd be wishing I was living on the pig and moon after this. Oh, I feel so sick. You light the skies up above me. With Natalie in pieces, Paul returns to face the music. A star so bright, you blind me. And tonight, Natalie, your blind date is behind door number one. Don't fade away. The hell of you two. What do you think of it? I absolutely love it. I can't believe you've done this. Missed you. <laughs> We need to talk about some elements. <laughs> Which ones? Have a guess. <laughs> don't care. Well, let's... Look, 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 you knew, you no, knew. No, Should we go and have a look? I don't want to have a look again. Did you press the buttons and I that? cried when I walked in. Did you press the buttons? And it wasn't crying of happiness. Did you press the buttons? <laughs> well, I don't need to press the... That room isn't pressing any of my buttons. <laughs> It's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. You're always seen. Love you to the moon and the stars. Yeah, but not literally. Well, I took it to another level. That's how much I love you. Why didn't you put that in your boys' room? This was about testing me. It wasn't about anything to annoy you. OK, can we come to a compromise? We'll keep that, but move the bed so that it's behind me. I can't wake up looking to that every morning. I feel like the world's closing in on me, literally. Take you to the stairs. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. <laughs> I am. It seems Paul's finally won Natalie over with his labour of love. Her mood's lifted, and she's ready to show off her new home to family and friends. I don't think people would have given Paul the artistic talent that he's got. I think he's done really well with it, so I'm really proud of him. The kitchen is to die for. If it was me, I'd be really, really happy. Paul's done really well. It's better than I expected, like I thought maybe he'd be dead by now. <laughs> I mean, the past three weeks has been really good, actually. I've enjoyed myself. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything back. I don't think I could have pulled something off like he's done. I think he's done really well. Oh, you're on another planet. Yeah, I am. Be, Literally. I'd be Rocket Man tonight. <laughs> It still feels a bit weird, but I love it and everybody everybody says it's amazing. They can't believe Paul did it. And it's just really nice that when I'm stood cooking, everyone can chat, everyone sees what I'm doing, and it, it is, it's such a warmer environment. It is really, really nice now, I love it. But the bedroom's still, mm, yeah. <laughs> This just isn't me and I can't get used to it. I can't, I don't find myself comfortable in here anymore. I don't feel as relaxed as I was before. I will be painting over the earth, definitely. That is a definite. <laughs> Not only has the experience changed their house, it's also changed them. My God, since this project started, Paul has not put down his toolbox. It's actually sent him into Bob the Builder wannabe. That's all he is at the moment. <laughs> Doing the project and everything we went through made me realise that I just want to be with him for the rest of my life. And you know, we're, we're getting married because of it, because we learned so much about each other and what we actually want as our future. You know, God, I, I would do it all again. I've got a lot more respect for him and a lot more trust in the fact that I don't have to rule the roost now. It's our home, not mine. Next time, newlyweds Carrie and Shari are given £10,000 to transform their cottage from shabby to chic. If it was my world, I would gut the whole thing and start again. He is desperate to create a love nest for the missus. Imagine if she hates it. 
Do I have to? Do I have to imagine that? But she has an unusual take on cosy. Well, I like the concrete. <gasps> Ka-ching! <laughs> Will Carey's ambitious plans be his downfall? I've sort of taken on a lot here. You know, I can't help thinking to myself that that was a bit silly, really. Stop, stop, stop! Got a leak. And what will Shari say when she comes face to face with her totally transformed home? Whoa! <laughs>